Thank you for joining the We Realize Operations webinar series 2016. Uh, we are in the month of August, and hence we're doing part eight, which is quite awesome. It's been a great series so far with uh, all the industry experts on We Realize Operations joining us and talking about what we can do with the product, talking about the concept of performance and capacity management, and talking about various different features and use cases uh, which they have lived with customers in the field. And uh, today we have Simon, uh, my usual partner in crime, and we have Ivan Rahabok, uh, who is uh, who just skipped and jumped into the management BU within VMware. So he was a part of uh, our field <laughs> sales team, and now he's just jumped into the management BU. So he'll be uh, he'll be basically helping uh, the field take their voices and the customers and take the customers' voices back to the engineers and build the product uh, uh, or, or just continue developing on what we have today. So, and he's been kind yeah. enough to go ahead and join us today and talk about uh, what he has been doing around operationalizing SDDC uh, using VROps and using custom dashboards within VROps. So before I hand over to Ivan, if you could, Ivan, if you could jump onto the next slide since you have the control. Yeah. Oh, that's your photo. Uh, here you yeah. <laughs> yep, here is Ivan on the right and Simon on the left and myself in the middle. And uh, for if you have any questions for this session or other sessions which we have done, or any questions in generic around realize operations, performance, and capacity management around SDDC, feel free to reach out to us via Twitter, our blogs, or LinkedIn. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, you have all the books on the next slide from Ivan and other experts. So Ivan, if you could jump on to the next one. Yep. So these are some of the some of the work which we have done collectively, and uh, some of our co colleagues within VMware have done on documenting what VR ops can do for you in various different phases of your SDDC journey. So would highly recommend these books. Now before I hand over to Ivan, one last thing. You all are on mute right now, so if you want to speak, you can do a star six or use the uh, interface to unmute yourself, or you can use the chat window for any questions. Uh, whilst Ivan is speaking, myself and Simon uh, would field those, those questions on the chat, and uh, we'll have a Q&A by the end of the session as well, so uh, you can save your questions for that time as well. And finally, we'll, we are recording all this, so uh, if, if you have to step away in between, that's fine. We'll be sending out the recording to everybody uh, once the session is done. With that, Ivan, go ahead. All yours. Thank you very much. And by the way, folks, uh, feel free to ask the questions. Now, there is a rumor that and perception that I love VR up so much, but I can tell you the reality is Sunny and Simon love it more than I do. <laughs> They're doing eight session. This is session number eight. Amazing, guys. Okay, so uh, today we want to share what actually the couple of guys have been working on. Uh, we have uh, Callum. Callum uh, is the uh, SDDC leader for Asia Pacific. Then we have Kenan Owens uh, based in Singapore. He is the practice leader for cloud operations. So they've been doing a program uh, called Operationalize Your World. And Sunny and I uh, helped them uh, providing a technical content. And uh, essentially, we do workshops. We've done Singapore, we've done uh, India, and we're going to other other regions uh, in APJ. Right? Uh, the workshops is not product focused, as you can see here. Uh, we cover the entire SDDC, the, the four area of management: availability, performance, capacity, and configuration. We cover the VM layers, the, the consumer layers, the provider layers. Those of you who listen to the VM world that Sonny and I did last year. We came up with the concept of the, the restaurant analogy. So this is the dining area, as Sonny likes to call it, and this is the, the kitchen. We also, as part of the workshop, it is a one-day workshop. So we deliver a set of dashboards that go beyond VMware admin. It is very typical in an environment the VMware admin has access to FizzFare, and the network guys being left out, the storage admin being left out, the help desk being left out. Uh, so, so we complement that, we deliver a set of dashboards 
that uh, this team uh, can take a look at it. Now, uh, at the end of the workshop, which is a one-day workshop, they actually get all this dashboard. Uh, if I may, we probably see this thing. This is one for senior management, small environment. This is configuration. This is the dashboard for the storage team, for the network team. This is dashboard covering availability. Uh, you can actually calculate your VM uptime now. You can have availability SLA. This is performance dashboard, capacity, and this is about a big screen. And at the end of that session, uh, they can find the materials. It's here. It is all in PowerPoint. So the same thing inside here. You can go and download it. And the PowerPoint consists of three set of deck, which I will just run through the first one in the interest of time. And uh, you feel free to ask questions. It's not clear because I'll be just giving a summary. And uh, we are giving in PowerPoint. As, uh, Sunny and I have been doing a couple of sessions together. You notice we always give it in PowerPoint because operations vary widely. How you do operations actually differ from customers to customers. So take what's relevant to you, throw away what is not, add your custom back and make it yours. And uh, share that with your peers and let us know how it goes. So I talked earlier about the dashboard. Here is the dashboard, right? And at the end, uh, we, also, we also provide steps to actually how to import all this dashboard. So essentially within an hour, you will have all these things in your environment. Folks, uh, feel free to ask a question. Sun is gonna monitor that. I'm now going to jump into the first deck. Or is there any question? No? Not yet. If not, sure, no problem. Let's do that. Sunny, I tend to speak fast. If I do, just let me know, and I'll speak even faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, I've been with VMware for coming eight years now, eight plus years. I'm part of the furniture now. It's, it is very common I get this kind of thing. In fact, this morning I just had a session with some colleagues in Australia. This is a very common thing. A VM owner, so you are the VMware guy. You brought VMware to your, to your, to your company. You save your company a lot of money by consolidating, right? and everyone is happy, but from time to time you get this kind of complaint. And the question is, what do you do? This kind of thing happens, right? And we put a light-hearted comment here, but you know the reality, this is pretty serious. This thing happens. And what, by the end of the, the workshop, which is a one-day workshop, so you will realize that you can actually answer this question within a minute. Within a minute, you should know whether it is your inability to serve, meaning the, the problem is in your patch, is in your area, your IAS platform, your, the service you're providing is no good, or it is not your fault. And within a minute, you should be able to do that. And that is the goal, um, and that is what customers get at the end of the workshop. So all this DAC started actually from this uh, situation. I got call from customers, and after a while, we developed the DAC and the dashboard. There is another thing that we hear quite often. Uh, I used to give this myself, actually, to some customers. So I apologize to them. I used to give this advice, right? And uh, we drive our operation based on commitment ratio. We have ratios everywhere guiding us. And if you go to blogs.vmware.com, there is uh, the Great blog article by Mark. Mark is our performance uh, specialist. He's written that uh, we shouldn't be driving by, by all these uh, ratios anymore. We should be driving by contention. Sunny, feel free to chime in, Sunny. You know this back as well as, well, uh, as well as I do. What's wrong with this statement is this statement tells you about your infrastructure, about your VMware, about your fish sphere. The reality is your customers don't care whether it is Vsphere or Vs something else, whether it's VMware or VM somewhere, ESXi, ESXK. They only care about the VMs and the apps. This doesn't tell anything about how the VMs are being served. If a CIO is asking you a question, uh, how is the you know, environment doing, he's asking about how the VMs are being served and not how the physical infrastructure is doing. 
So, so uh, continuing with that school of thought, this is a bit, another very common requirement uh, from customers to me. I hear it all the time. I'm going to be able to monitor all these things. And if you look at your IAS platform, it consists of storage network servers, the three pillars. They work together and they serve the application. The problem with that is uh, it's quite pretty complicated. There are many things. And you're going to even add more capability and hence complexity by adding, for example, virtual storage and, and virtual the network. And you want to be able to see four things because they are related. You know, if you have an availability problem, it can impact performance. Right? You got the wrong config, it can impact performance. So even though we can magically build a dashboard that serves all these things, that analyze all these things, it doesn't tell you how your VMs are being served. If you got a thousand VMs or ten thousand VMs or two hundred VMs, none of these things are gonna tell you how the VMs are being served. So I'm not saying this requirement is bad. I'm saying this requirement is looking at the kitchen. It's not looking at the dining area. It's looking at, uh, oh yeah, you've got enough chefs, you've got enough frying pan, you've got enough tomato. It doesn't talk about are the food served on time to every diner? Do they enjoy it? Do they pay you well? It doesn't say that. So this dashboard should first be complemented with the set of dashboard that are looking at the VM, your customers, the dining area. That should be your primary dashboard. All these things that you are looking at here, this should be your secondary dashboard. This is more of a troubleshooting kind of dashboard. Okay, I talk about the CIO requirements. Uh, uh, I can't remember who told me this. I, I got this many years ago. Basically, they said that you want to go to prove that the P-Sphere or the VMware platform is doing well, it's doing all the VM well. Let's take a look at it, right? Every single VM. And since it is IAS, there are only four things in IAS. This is the first day of data center, CPU, RAM, network, disk. And let's do it every five minutes, day in, day out. So let's have that cadence. Let's have that discipline. Because if you do an hour, it is too long. Even customers telling me 15 minutes are way too long because there can be a spike and we will miss that. All right? So let's say you got a thousand VMs. How do you prove that on a dashboard? And what does the word well there? I, I put it in red because that has to be defined because otherwise it's subjective, right? So let's drill down a thousand VMs times four things that CPU, RAM, network storage. And if you measure every five minutes, in one hour, you have 12 data points. In one day, 280. In one month, 8,650. So in a month, you have close to 35 million uh, data points that you got a pass every month for 1,000 VM. If you got 10,000 VM, that number becomes 346 million data points. That is essentially what the CIO is asking you when you're going to pass this. And to me, this is what you have to deliver. This is what you can deliver. You deliver this, suddenly you are in a position where you are not being defensive. Suddenly you become the best guy as opposed to the guy that's slowing down business. And of course, there are more questions, you know, life in data center operation is pretty complicated, right? This is a typical question. This is uh, another typical question, right? So it's a shared environment. Uh, out of that 1,000 VM, somebody can just run something. And uh, this is another one, right? Then locking locks, right? So a lot of VMware admin don't even look at the locks of each peer. The only time they look at it, well, when the GSS asks uh, for the locks to be uploaded. I spent quite a fair bit of time looking at locks, and, and I think uh, you learn a lot about products by looking at the locks. Right, and of course, configuration, especially in an environment that is regulated. People want to know, you know, we got 5 p.m. admin globally. We wanted to know what did they do, when to what object. So these are questions that are being answered in the workshop. By the end of the day, the dashboard uh, answered all those questions. Finally, I want to take a pause here. Uh, any questions from, from the audience? 
Am I talking uh, common sense? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I think the pace is really nice. I don't have a question at this moment from the audience, but yeah, your pace is absolutely you, perfect. So carry on. Yeah. Okay, you're always being nice, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, as DBC monitoring, this is very, this is it's some the way I see it. Uh, I think as VMware, the, we bring this sphere to the world, right? We help customers, architects. It's fair we teach customers how to architect it. There are many best practices. But I think there's not enough emphasis on how we monitor SDDC. And SDDC can just mean the simple sphere with whatever you have, or it can be virtual sphere with virtual storage and virtual network. And what we want to say is you gotta change your operation. It's not the same thing. And uh, and hopefully you will you get to see it. I think this deck is very clear. The, every single customers we talk to, they always say, yes, uh, nobody cares about the infra. I get paid to make sure that the infra is doing well, but that is, that is my job, right? Uh, my customers, the business, the line of business, the business unit, the application team, the VM owners, whatever you want to call it, they only care about the VMs. Right? And in, in a lot of cases, they don't quite even care about the OS, actually. They just care about the app. Right? And then there is the infrastructure layer. So as a result, what we are changing, what we are telling customers now, there is a disconnect, right? So take a look at it. They only care about the VM. So why are you monitoring just this part? You should monitor this part first. Make sure that there is not a single VM have problem. If not a single VM has problem, you can have a lot of problems on the infra layer, but if nobody complains, you know, you can take your time to troubleshoot that. Okay. So we we'll talk about the two different layers. I think was, I'm, I'm going to speed up, Sunny. Uh, now, for every layer, you're going to ask. Uh, first of all, see, the thing about your IAS platform, your VMware platform that you are in charge and you are, you know, uh, administering, it is actually mostly up all the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here listening to this talk, right? You'll be busy firefighting in the data center. So availability is normally high. What is not so high that you typically face is performance. And the reason why is because you offer commit. That's the reality. You don't put one VM per ESXi, right? You've got more than that. You've got 10, 20, 30, 40 to 1 consolidation ratio. So performance. If you look at it from a VM owner point of view, I just asked one question, is my VM fast? Whether you are busy handling the other 10,000 VMs, that's not really my problem, that's your problem. I only care about my VM. It's the same thing, right? Uh, you are in a service business. You are in, uh, let's say you, well, Sunny and I, we're gonna have a uh, privilege to go to VMworld. Uh, so we're gonna be sitting, of course, in the economy class. Uh, you don't care about the other 200 passengers. If your food is not being served on time, you complain. It's not about everybody, right? So that is the customer's view. But as a provider, you care. Do we serve everyone well? You know, we promise to serve everyone in the economy class is entitled for food. You know, some sort of, some kind of food, you know, I mean, they look like food, but you know, it's entitled for food. If somebody is not, is not given food, well, there's a problem. Because that's what you promise. And you notice also, the SLA is the same, basically, for everybody, right? That is why they are in the same tier. Now, performance in the SDDC layers, there's no such thing. This is one change we are telling customers. So there's no such thing of performance of your SDDC. Whether your all flash uh, array or PSAN is doing one millisecond latency of five or ten. That doesn't mean it is fast. Because if you promise them five milliseconds and you are doing six, it's slow. If you promise them ten, you're doing six, you're fast. You see that? Performance is not tied to the SDDC layers. It's tied to the VM. So there is no such thing as performance. You got to change your mindset. The word performance has got nothing to do with your SDDC. 
You don't have a fast SDDC. Just because the spec is high doesn't mean it's fast. Okay, next word, capacity. This is another one that people got confused. It's uh, capacity, uh, it's pretty common for us to get a request. Uh, uh, even there's a lot of VMs that are oversized, we need to size them down. Practically speaking, it's not your job. Because when somebody asks for eight, he asks for eight, he pay for eight. You can value add and telling the person, look, actually you don't need eight, you can pay me less and you're gonna perform faster, but that's a value add, right? And from a VM owner, again, it's asking about my VM. Should I be bigger? Should I be smaller? From your situation, you are looking at the whole thing. Where can we reclaim? So you notice the same question, very different angle. Right, and at capacity, of course, we are dealing with something physical. Do we have you know, too much infra? Do we have too much VMware license, too much Windows license, too much Red Hat license, etc.? Too much hardware? Right, and the last one is availability. Very simple, uh, as a consumer, is my VM up? You promised me, for example, for my VM, 99.95. Well, did you deliver that? I want to see whether your cluster is up or down, your ESXi is up or down, that's not my problem. Actually, I actually don't care about your ESXi or clusters or your storage. I only care about my VM. You better give me a report on my VM. Same thing at the availability as the, as the provider, you're looking at the whole thing. You're managing a thousand VMs. Are you gonna report to the CIO, okay, out of a thousand VMs we are managing, how is the aggregate availability? Again, the availability of your ESXi cluster, then they are secondary. Okay, and of course, you complement that with the availability at the IS level. You know, your clusters, your physical network switches, et cetera, your physical array. Last one is, of course, configuration, uh, and we have it at the bottom also. So these are the things that the audience, uh, the attendee of the workshop gets it. Uh, at the end of the one-day uh, one workshop. Okay, we talked about performance earlier. I touched it, uh, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. We talked earlier about well. So you gotta be clear. When you architect that environment, you have an expectation in mind. You have to write it down and you have to communicate that to the upper management and to the customers, right? And we talked earlier, it's got nothing to do with uh, the spec. And you've got to quantify IAS in three area. Quantify fast, define this thing. Storage for your, uh, let's say you have, you promise uh, two tier of storage. Tier one, what's the latency? You got to, you got to, you got to specify that, right? And same thing with tier two, etc. Okay. So once you specify that, it is not good enough uh, to just say it. You've got to make it as part of your formal the service level agreement. And to give you an example, and uh, let's say you measure the disk latency and you measure it every five minutes, right? And if this is an actual performance and this is what you promise, well, it performs fast. You do your job, right? And uh, by, you know you do your job is because there is a threshold. If there is no threshold, guess what is the replacement threshold? If you don't specify it, somebody else is gonna specify it for you and that is based on complaint. It's based on complaint. There's no complaint, you're doing well. But you don't, you don't wanna, I call it, leave it to somebody else to define it because that is gonna be difficult. Uh, to see you, there's no agreement, you don't set expectation, it becomes variable expectation, and then you, you, you depend on relationship as a result. That's not a position you wanna, you wanna be. Okay, so that's performance, the capacity. So we talked earlier that capacity is driven by the performance. Uh, give an example. Uh, say your the storage array, or, or your CSAN, or, or whichever it is. Uh, you have about 100 terabyte left. This was actually the 
uh, answered by by customers uh, storage admin actually. I, I had a, a, mat, a storage admin in, in VMworld, and he was asking me about how do we how do we do capacity planning for for my array? And I asked how many how many terabytes you got you got uh, space? Let's say 100 terabytes. How much space left? Let's say 80 terabytes. So plenty of capacity left. But then I ask, if the VMs are having high latency, they're experiencing high latency on the array, right? Are you going to add more VMs to the array because you have 80 terabytes left? Immediately, his answer in front of his CIO, no. Right away, he said no, because why would he spend time troubleshooting? So that's an example of performance as LA defines your capacity. There's another part, availability. Let's say you have a mission critical cluster. In that cluster, uh, let's say it is a cluster of 10, and you have, uh, let's say, 200 VMs inside there, and they are responsible for a significant number of the company's revenue. So in that aspect, because uh, it is tied to the business directly, there is a revenue impact, you decided and you, you discussed it with your upper management of, of putting that cluster is N plus two. So it's, you architect for eight hosts and you have two hosts for spare. Just in case uh, you are doing maintenance on Friday night on one host and then if, if another host goes down, it doesn't trigger a panic because you know you cater for that. And, and even from a business standpoint, the value of the 200 VM running in the clusters far outweigh the cost of another extra host. So you are running that VMs on that cluster of N plus two, of eight plus two, and uh, you also size conservatively. You do not offer commit. The total VRAM does not exceed uh, the total uh, VRAM, and the total vCPU does not exceed the, the total physical cores. As a result, performance is going to be good. There is no contention. Performance is not applicable. All the VM can run full blast at 100%, or there won't be any contention. Utilization will always be low because you've got N plus 2. So in this case, your capacity is driven by your availability. And once you take this into account, then you take into account the utilization of your cluster, the utilization of your data store, the utilization of your network. A lot of a lot of customers going straight into this, and they do take this into account to some extent, but they forgot about this. And, we, and in that workshop, we share about that. Okay, and we talked earlier that you got to define fast. Now, this thing is something that is quite familiar to you, actually. You got VMs running on ESXi hosts. Right, and in the VM level, you can measure the VM utilization. And then ESXi level, you can measure the infra utilization. The VM utilization is VM capacity. The infra is infra capacity. The VMs, if they are contending, they will be having performance problems. That is where you define your performance SLA, how well you serve the VM. How well you serve the VM has got nothing to do with the VM utilization, has got little to do with your infra utilization. It can be caused by it, right? But this is how you monitor it. This is where you monitor. This is, may, this is where you may need to troubleshoot. There is a difference between monitoring and troubleshooting. Where you monitor, when where you troubleshoot. Okay. This particular deck is, uh, we, had, we added this deck uh, because a lot of the customers, you know, they are the VMware guy in the company, they know VMware very well, but their peers do not know it so well. You've got network team, you've got storage team, you've got security team, you've got compliance guy, you've got upper management, you've got help desk. They may not know how virtualization works. So this DAC, we found it very useful to our customers to, to present to their peers. So let's get a VM. Let's say you configure with either 4 CP or 16 gig of RAM, whichever the number is. That top line here is called provision. This is what is configured. And uh, in C-Sphere, you can set reservation, you can set limit, which you shouldn't do. 
Now, uh, there is a line here, and the reason why we we put the uh, italic and we have it like in animation entitlement. This is a counter that does not exist in physical world. This is what the VM kernel, this is what the hypervisor and title schedules the VM. A VM cannot use more than what is entitled, regardless of what the VM is asking. It cannot use more than what is entitled. In a good, healthy, high-performing environment, the VM use whatever it is entitled. And what the VM gets to use is also what the VM actually demands. So demands, usage, entitlement, they are very similar, with demand and usage being, the, you know, demand is below usage and usage is below entitled. That is what you want in a healthy environment. Can the, can the VM demand more than what it gets to use? Possible, right? So a VM wants to, a, a VM has 16 CPU. It wants to run 16 CPU, but your ESXi are busy because it's got uh, other VMs running. It can't serve that. They can only serve two. Well, you will have contention. A VM can demand up to what is being proficient. If it is proficient with four, CPU, Windows or Red Hat will never schedule five. So contention is what you need to measure. This is how you prove that your IAS is performing fast. It's performing fast and this is performance counters and fast is defined by the SLA. Okay, so this is just a wrap up with the difference with performance and capacity. Make sure a lot of Customers, especially the non-VMware team, as in you know your peers, right? They may not be clear. So it is it is a good idea to take time, explain to your peers. It will help you. The other thing that I see from customers is customers is telling me, Iman, we are doing an alert-based monitoring. It makes me think alert-based monitoring. See, by the time you got an alert, you're already troubleshooting. They're no longer monitoring. There is a difference between monitoring and troubleshooting. Monitoring is SOP, what you do daily. You can give it to the help desk guy. Check this, this, this. And you're trying to... Uh, looks like we lost the one there. Yeah, looks like. All right. Be patient. I think he's get. He should get in anytime. This only E1 can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, brother. E1, can you hear us? He. He's on mute at the moment. Ah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you now. Sorry, man. I haven't been paying our... my phone bills for months. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you switch <laughs> jobs, man, from sales to engineering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So what we want to make it clear is uh, I think gone are the days when in the physical data centers you can afford to do what we call management by exception. If nobody complains, don't do anything. You can't do that anymore. And uh, you've got to have monitoring and you've got to have troubleshooting. Monitoring, give it to the help desk, give it to the L1 team, right? These are the steps that you check. And, uh, and then you have your troubleshooting. And, uh, and what we are doing in the set of dashboard that we are giving you is that uh, monitoring the dashboard that you can quickly check how is my environment performing? How is it serving the, the customers very, very quickly? Okay, so we talk about performance SLA and we talk about it's got to be agreed. There is no point having a performance SLA if nobody agrees with you, right? And so this is an example. Remember you provide, you provide IAS, 
So you gotta have it, CPU, memory, network, storage. And it is a good idea to always have at least two surface tier. If you only have one surface tier, that surface tier is by default what we call it the physical tier. Because that that is what your customers know. They come, they all come from the physical world, right? When I got dedicated servers. And unless you have set expectation clearly that performance will drop, you gotta have one tier where you tell them, look, in this tier, I do not offer commit. In this tier, it is as good as physical. And I can measure it to you, I can measure it every five minutes and you will see there will be no contention. Because I don't offer commit. Now, if you can't afford it, I've got a cheaper tier for you. So you've got to have at least two tiers, right? And of course, there are, this is just technical details, uh, so you want to skip that. And how do you architect surface tier into your environment? This is an example. Again, guys, this is an example, right? But take a look at this. The physical spec is the same for every host. It depends on how many VMs you put inside there. That will impact performance. That is going to impact your concentration risk ratio. Because you may have said, you may say that, look, in a mission critical VM, tier one, I don't put more than 100 VMs in a cluster. So that is your availability zone. If something happens in that cluster or whatever reason, you can guarantee to the CEO, look, there won't be more than 100 VM affected. But in tier three, well, there can be 400. Why? Because, well, this is four times cheaper, even though they are the same hardware. Right, and, pick, and you also play with the, the size of the host because the larger it is, the more complex it is. When I patch one, I gotta patch the other 15. And you go down in terms of storage, etc., monitoring, you go and specify that. So that, that is how you build it. So I, I have arrived at the first part of the, uh, the, the deck. First message, you gotta have SLA. If you are not, it doesn't matter that you think you are a service provider, that your customers think you are a service provider, that you are even doing chargeback for VM. You don't have an SLA, you are a system builder. And uh, your, you have availability SLA. And why do you have that? It's to protect yourself. Take an example. Uh, ESXi hit the purple screen at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, and within, let's say, four minutes, the VMs are already up on the other ESXi in a cluster. Your availability SLA happens to be, let's say, five minutes. In the morning, when the VM owner complained to you that there was a down, unscheduled downtime, you could say, yeah, my apology, but we missed the SLA. If, imagine, you don't have SLA, you're going to get whacked in the morning. They say, what happened? It went down. I got affected. There are transactions that couldn't be completed. And now we're going to do it manually. The SLA is your defense line. Same thing with performance. Set the expectation. Is it five milliseconds or six milliseconds or four milliseconds latency? Set that. Okay, and we talk about capacity is defined by performance and availability. Sunny, as you know with very well, we have arrived at the first part of the deck. Yep. Awesome, awesome. How do you want so to, I think how, uh, how do you want to, how do you want to go, go forward? Ahead. Yeah. So Ivan, the, the one you. thing which I want to highlight here is uh, is that you've given a very good underlying, uh, you know, the the base in terms of how we build the story and how it has been operationalized at multiple customer places. And I, I think you also talked about the dashboards in the beginning yeah. uh, in terms of yeah. from where can people get them, et cetera. So I think a good idea would be if you could, uh, in fact, you've just read my mind. So if you could just run through some of these dashboards in the, in the next few minutes, and then probably since you have a lab as well, and I could see that uh, it's humming away, probably we can have a look at a couple of dashboards live as well. Yeah. And, uh, and for the audience and people who will listen to this recording later on, uh, is 
the key is not how to build these dashboards. Of course, you would want to know that and learn about that as well. Uh, but the key which we are trying to deliver to this session is how you can use some of the content which is already built by Ivan, myself, Simon, and others uh, in the industry, and how you can take that home uh, to your environments and start using it, as, as he mentioned earlier on. And, and as he mentioned, it's not about uh, reactive troubleshooting always, uh, which is on the basis of alerts, but uh, proactive monitoring. Uh, monitoring has to be proactive. You cannot monitor something otherwise. Uh, you're just reacting to a situation, uh, So as he, uh, as he went correctly said. So uh, let's go on, Iwan. I'll, I'll, I'll have you yeah. talk about these dashboards and then probably a live demo. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, if you notice this six dashboard we want to share, right? If you take a look at it, they are all looking at the VM. There is nothing that looking at your cluster, your ESXi, your PSAN, your NSX, nothing here. This is all about looking after the VM. You want to be able to answer to the CIO question, yep. No single VM is affected. That is what you want to answer first. Then you can talk about, you know, there's a problem with the uh, storage array. Okay, let's look at the first. So let's look at the first one. Do we serve every VM well, right? And the way we do that, uh, remember the the question that we had earlier in the deck from the CIO every five minutes, right? So this is VM this latency. Let's say you got six VMs here. And this is the latency. And what we do is we take the max of all this VM. So we don't care which VM have was hit by high, the, the latency, we take the max. We also take the average of this VM. So we're creating two new metrics. I'm using 6 VM in the examples here because otherwise it's going to be convoluted. But in your actual environment, there may be 200 VMs in that cluster, whichever. Right. So what you do is you take the max, and you take the average. Now, this is where it comes in. This is where the performance SLA comes in. If that is what you promise, you're doing well. If that is what you promise, the capacity is full. Do not add any more VM. If you do, you're going to have this. So that is how we use max and average. And this is a screenshot from, from VROP. Uh, how we fix the, in this case, the maximum CPU contention and average CPU contention, right? So you do that and you apply it typically at the cluster object. Now, I, and what are the line charts? Since you are selling IAS CPU, and given example here, there are two tiers here. There are silver and gold. An example, let's say, See, the two clusters actually have identical performance. But in silver, since you promised 25, this cluster is doing well. This goal is not doing well. You breach your SLA. You fail to deliver what you promised. Or if it is like in an internal environment, you can tell CIO, look, we do need to add more hardware. We've been adding VM, and or the VM demand has increased in the past six months. Collectively, has increased that we have breached what we promised. We need to add more hardware. You see how you can use this thing to justify your position. So that was CPU. Same thing you repeat for memory. Same thing for disk. Same thing for network. Typically, for network, if you don't expect drop packets, you can just kind of have uh, another matrix that just plot for the entire data centers, regardless of service tier. Okay. So, so I said earlier, we track at the cluster level, right? And the next question, if there's a VM that is affected, you want to know who and what time, right? And you know a different VM may be affected by different things. It's not always the same, right? You can't control that. So here is what we do. And this is a good practice. Also, you will notice in the deck, for every dashboard, we have a widget design uh, slide uh, before the dash, actual dashboard. I find it useful to do a whiteboard, actually. You can do it in PowerPoint. You can do it on a whiteboard. Plan your dashboard. What do you want it to look like? So inside here, uh, we got a small widget 
a table. It lists all the clusters. I click on the clusters, it automatically shows me the CPU contention on that cluster. This one, the memory contention. This one is the disk latency. And of course, I plot the I plot also the SLA line, so I know whether it's above or below. And once you do that, this is what it looks like. So in this example, uh, I have different clusters, and they have uh, the, the different size, the number of VMs, CPU, etc. And I have different policy. So this happens to be tier one. And take a look at it. This is my SLA, and this is the max. So I'm, I'm below, I'm fine. This cluster is fine, it's doing fine. I can tell uh, to the CIO or to my management, look, the cluster is doing fine. We are delivering what we promise. Same thing with the memory. By the way, if you do not overcommit memory in the, in the host or in the clusters, this is what you're gonna see, a flat line of zero. CPU will never be zero by the nature of ready time. This one, this latency, as you can tell, I promise about 10 milliseconds and I'll bridge it from time to time already. So this cluster, I know, uh, I have a problem with this. If this thing is a distributed storage, as in the storage is like vSAN or Nutanix or Simplicity, it's back to the cluster, well, I'm not gonna add any more VM because it's gonna make it worse because uh, I, I can't have obviously meet the performance requirements anymore. So, to, so that is, I'm gonna show it to you in fact. To go here, uh, example. Can you see it, Sunny? Is it too small? Yes, I can. No, I, I think it's good. It's fine. Really? Looks that yep. small on my screen. Look a little bigger. Yeah, you have that big monitor out there. It's not a monitor, right? It's a it's a knock environment <laughs> that you have at your home. <laughs> okay, so guys, so this is a list of clusters. By what you saw earlier. So if I click just now, I don't know what I clicked here. One. What I want to show you here, the number this is five. This is my SLA. I'm going to click here too. You see this number? 10. It's a different number now. Because I promise, a high, I mean, I don't promise so low. Right? So with this, very quickly, I can tell the, how is my cluster doing. If a performance is bridge and I want to know which VMs are affected, or I want to know, hang on, who is doing that? Who, who is, uh, so basically the victim and the villain concept. You want to know what are the victims who are affected, and you want to know you know whether there was a villain, someone doing certain uses, right? We can click on this thing, and it passes the cluster object to this dashboard. So what you are looking at here is from that particular cluster. The cluster object is being passed, right? And uh, and in the current version of six two or six dot three now, uh, you gotta change the date manually, but that is a matter of just changing the date. Right? And and that's it basically. So that is the first two dashboard. There's a question Sunny in the chat window. Not as of now. I don't see any new okay. questions at this moment. Yep. Okay. I want to cover the second use case. Remember when the VM owner complaint story? This is what you want to do, right? So the first thing you want to be able to answer is how well does the infra serve the VM? And that thing is just four things. CPU, RAM, disk, network, contention, contention, latency, and drop package. That's all. And uh, you don't have to provide any other information you know, that uh, those four counters are, are what is required to prove that you are doing your job or not. That is monitoring, that is not troubleshooting, right? So uh, let's take a look at it. Dashboard, performance, single VM, 
one of three. All right, I can search. I can type the VM name here. Let's just type SAP. I click on it. This is what I don't like. Hang on. Huh? I'm using 6.2, guys, and uh, sometimes 6.2 has the problem of moving this thing down here. Come on. Okay, fixed now. This thing got moved just now to the bottom. Uh, we fixed that in 6.3. Okay, so right away I can tell I need the CPU. The, the latency I bridge from time to time, that's not good. If the problem happens at this time, right away I know, yes, it's my fault. Uh, I've got to look into it. And, uh, and then this is the memory contention. All you need to do is tell the help desk, make sure the line is below the threshold. Then you're doing a good job. Then we serve. Now, that is monitoring. You may want to... You may want to do, okay, I'm on, a, I'm on a value add. I want to troubleshoot it now. I want to help you troubleshoot. Because it is not about me serving you now. I, I think I serve you well. That is very clear. And, but if, it is, if, I, if, it is, if, if there is a problem, it could be, could be two things. could be upstream, could be downstream. Upstream could be maybe your size is not enough. You're having the high CPU utilization. Or you got... 10 CPU and you are somehow your process is being pinned to the first two. So the first two CPU is very busy. Or it could, or it could be downstream. My fault. Uh, I've got to check. Maybe my ESXi is saturated. Maybe my data store is saturated. Right? So now we are in a troubleshooting. We're no longer monitoring the troubleshooting. And again, I can select the VM. And when I select the VM, it automatically now show me things such as I got details IOPS now. Because now I'm troubleshooting. Could there be a spike in the IOPS on that particular VM? I'm looking at the CPU demand, ready, cost stop, swap weight of, of the VM now. And I am looking at individual CPU now. And this is, and I can look at it. I'm taking the max, five minutes max of any time period that I set. So I want to know, you know, was it saturated? Was any particular core saturated? Right? Same thing with the network, with the red, is there any ballooning, etc. I can also check, so it automatically shows the ESXi. I can click on it, and I can check the ESXi utilization. I can see whether it's saturated. Is it having a problem? You notice I have the word contention, contention. I don't have ESXi in the first utilization. Let's see it. This is utilization, this is performance. Utilization is not performance. You, you gotta make that clear. A lot of customers still thinking utilization equals performance. Performance is about speed. Utilization is about how hard the, the object is working. Doesn't mean it's fast, right? Okay, so that's ESXi. And then I have also the data store. And uh, Sunny was, uh, saying earlier, you know, all this dashboard, we can download, there is a step, there is a video how to do that, and you can customize it. All these widgets are actually highly customizable. You can add whatever you want inside here, basically. I don't have, I don't have NSX here, I don't have PSAN here, you can add it. So that is the second use case. Uh, Sunny, any, no questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna continue. Now, I have a couple of questions. Uh, they're long ones. Let me just uh, go through them. I think the first question was that, can we pull a, pull a report of VMs? Uh, uh, so I can take that one. That's a simple one. Uh, yes, you can. So there are out-of-the-box reports within VROps which you can use uh, and pull a report of VMs in terms of how many VMs, what are their, their names, their configurations, etc. That's a simple one. Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, there is another question uh, from Joe. Uh, so he says that uh, when I have CPU contention, so he has this problem that whenever he checks for CPU contention and check why uh, and check why I see high CPU latency, 
Oh, so you're looking at the power settings in the BIOS and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. So I think the question to summary is that he's, he's trying to understand how the CPU latency metric is calculated and where is it coming from. So he's seeing CPU contention, CPU latency, and he's looked at the BIOS settings uh, to make sure that it's set to high performance on ESXi but uh, he's not able to figure out that why there is CPU latency. I think it's a valid question. Ivan, you want to uh, talk about that? Okay, it seems Ivan has dropped again. So I can, I can answer that question. So if you look at the CPU latency metric, uh, if you look at the CPU latency metric, which is uh, available in vCenter, that's one of the metric which is contributing to CPU contention. Now, there are other metrics as well which contribute to CPU contention, right? which could be uh, CPU core stop, CPU ready, and the third one itself is CPU latency, as you just mentioned. So if any of these metrics are on higher side, then you will see a CPU contention being generated. Ivan, are you back? Okay, I think people are just jumping off and on, or there's some problem with the WebEx. But that's that's the answer to your CPU latency uh, or CPU contention question. Now, for each different uh, or for each different metric, you would have to look at different areas. So let's say if you have a CPU high CPU weight, in that case, you would have to look at uh, your I/O, which is happening through VM kernel. So whether it's a network I.O. or storage I.O. which is blocking you or which is blocking the CPU. If you're seeing high CPU ready, it basically means that your virtual machine is ready to execute, but it's not able to because it's one or, one or more vCPUs which are there in the VM are not able to schedule on a physical core. So this is usually a case where you have high amount of uh, consolidation which on CPU side. Uh, and the third one is CPU core stop. A cold stop usually happens when you, you when you have a wrong or incorrect perform BIOS setting from a performance standpoint. So if you let the CPU cores sleep or the features within the CPU cores sleep uh, for saving power, in that case, uh, you will see a high amount of cold stop uh, whenever uh, the CPU features are requested by the virtual machines. Now, this is where cold stop shoots up and causes contention. There are multiple areas and multiple reasons why you can have contention, and then you need to basically look at these three metrics to understand which one of is uh, your your cause. Uh, if you are working on ESX 5.5, then there are situations where high network I/O done by a VM or a high storage I/O done by a VM is also charged to CPU contention, and hence it is important for you to look at CPU. Uh, uh, Sunny, wait. Sunny. Yeah. Yeah. Sunny. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? My suggestion is we, we take that offline. We should have another session on that thing because a lot of things inside there, man. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So I was just trying to summarize the answer while you were gone. But now that you're here, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's I a good question, but I think that, that, that deserves that deserve a session on itself. That is pretty deep. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about it. But I mean, I'm just mindful of the audience. Okay, we want to because you asked me about the uh, about this thing, right? Okay. So the next thing we want to know is: Does anyone abuse your environment? That's the thing you want you want to know. And this this happens from time to time. This uh, this next screenshot actually coming from real life uh, situations. So what we did uh, is uh, I got a call by a customer who says that, that they got hit, somebody's doing something, and we don't know, they don't know who, they don't know when, right? It's pretty common request from customers to me that say, Ivan, find the bugger, find the damn thing, find that VM. So what we have done is we essentially have uh, a super matrix. We track the maximum VM disk IOPS among all the VMs. We track it. So if there is anybody doing high IOPS, it will show up. We also do an average just to see whether this is a population issue, is a genuine demand rising across the VM, or this is the job of one or two guys. 
and uh, we do the same thing for network, and this is what it looks like. Uh, this was, uh, you notice inside here, I plot the max VMI ops in the clusters. And this particular customer had about three clusters, and I plotted cluster by cluster. And I saw at this at 3.30 in the morning, the IOPS rose very high to a very high number. And the average only went up to 14.49 IOPS. And this particular cluster has about 500 VMs. So this is the job of basically one or two guys only, not the job of a lot of people. So we zoom into it, and we know the time, 3.16 in the morning. And once we know this, it's a matter of having a top end, we list the VM at 3.14 in the morning and we got the VM. Essentially, within a few minutes, we know who that VM was. And this is what the dashboard looks like, right? Uh, if I'm gonna relate it back the, to the demo, because some customers have a larger environment, what we have set up is from here, from the overall here, is you pick a cluster, right? You pick a cluster like this, and let's pick a cluster with more VMs, uh, this guy. And then from here, you can go navigate certain users. And then it will tell you in that cluster the max IOPS and the max number of VMs. You see a spike here, the summary did something, and we know exactly, you know, by changing the time, you know exactly who did it. So that was not a dashboard. This one is another one. How bad is the over-provisioning? I think we all know it is bad, but I think you want to know how bad, right? If I use an analogy, the touch wood, you know, if your child is sick, touch wood, uh, you want it to know, is it 37.5 fever or is it 38.5? One degree makes a difference. You want to be accurate. So let's take a look at it, and uh, I'm going to skip this, because since you all know that. So what we do is we essentially plot all your large VM, and we take the maximum uh, in this case. So we, we created two groups, one VM with 8 CPU and above. Again, you can configure that, and another group VM with, let's say, 24 gig RAM or higher. So this group is VM with high CPU, okay? And we plot the maximum CPU utilization among all these large VMs. So if any one of them is doing a spike, it will show up here. It only takes one guy, one VM. Then we also plot an average of all these VMs. And so if they are right size, this is what you're gonna see on scenario number two. This is what you wanna see. At any given moment, somebody is utilizing that high number of CPU that we give the person, they give the VM. So it's being used well. And overall, everyone is it's about at 40%, so it's the, it's the right size. That's good. This is not what you wanna see. This thing at any given moment, Nobody is using more than 25%. You can actually cut down everybody by half, and you are still fine. This thing is like below 5%, this is really bad. So let's take a look at it. Inside here, so this is the max, and this is the average. Now, the... This, in this example, this is not good, right? So the average is, is low. It's not high enough, right? But this is an expected situation because over-provisioning is very common. You notice here there are two parts. This part is not what you want to see, this part. The max is less than 50. This is something that is a little better. It's still a little better because somebody above that, there's somebody that is undersized or you have a contention issue inside here. Now, the, the thing about this line chart is it doesn't tell you the individual VMs. If you are talking to VM owner, if I'm a VM owner and I own the SAP uh, VM, I don't care about the rest. That is your problem, man. Uh, I only care about my VM. 
So you've got to show it VM by VM. And what we are doing here is if there is any five minutes peak, it will show up here. So the timeline here can be one week, can be one month, you, you decide, right? And you show the peak here. And uh, in fact, why don't I do a switch to the live demo instead? Gonna make it a little smaller and a little smaller. Okay, so this is the five minutes max. This is a one hour max because just in case it was just, uh, you know, Windows uh, Weekly uh, boot or Windows Weekly patch or, or anti virus. So you can say a one hour max and you can have an average and you can configure this, this timeline. This is one month. Right, and of course you can see the, the average and max of everybody, of all your large VMs. Now this is good, and, but it is not feasible. It doesn't put the VMs in relative context, and it's hard to kind of tell where, it, where they are in the clusters, in the data centers. This is where this guy comes in. This guy is color coded. And what you wanna see is mostly green, meaning they are at about 50%. If they are at 100, they are Undersized. Now this is a heat map. It's a live heat map, meaning it is showing the current situation. It is not showing the past, right? You, because you may ask, hey, Ewan, I saw 100 here, and how come I don't see anything red here? Because if this is the, the last data. The last data is 5.8. It's 21%. This is showing this, not showing this. This is so. This is this is every five minutes, right? So this thing is useful to be placed in a large, in, in the big screen, in the projector. Let your CIO go and see it as he walks past every day. And if he walks past three times a day and every day for one whole month, he sees black, you know, his face will turn black one day because it's undersized. We spend too much money. It's all undersized, right? Now again, all this thing, one, two, three, gives you an overall. If you are dealing with a single VM owner, you have to go down to individual VM. And this is where we use this part. You can click on one of them, the VM that is relevant to that owner. And again, we are plotting. We are plotting the maximum five minutes max of every single CCPU here. So I can tell to the VM owners, look, in the past, whatever, this is what, this is one day, we can make it one month, right? It's, it's none of your CPU is, is using 100% because in free center, in real-time chart, you recall, real-time chart is based on 20 seconds. So 20 seconds is 100%. So this thing is not even 50%. This thing is actually confirmed here. In notice here, this is the last 30 days utilization CCPU demand, and the 95th percentile is at 24 something. 95% of the time, the VM is spending less than 24%. And there are a couple of times it hit 45, 60, but it never hit 50%. It's oversized. Now, a VM owner typically want to see the individual CPU play every five minutes. And this is where you show this thing. Uh, <laughs> VR ops likes to give me surprise from time to time. <laughs> it is configured. It, it, it is configured. It's just not happy with me today. And <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Where is it? Huh? View the. This is, a, this is what I meant. You can see the individual CCP utilization go across time. And look at these numbers. Remember, this is 9K, 8K. Uh, in C Center, the, 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 the measurement of CPU use is in milliseconds. C Center, C Center tracks the data every 20 milliseconds, uh, every 20 seconds, which is 20,000. 100% is 20K or 20,000. Or 20, so none of this thing, not a single core is touching 
in, in any five minutes time. So that is uh, one. And you can also complement it if you wanted to know is your environment, uh, you know, uh, the VM uh, right size, right? You will not hit this situation. This situation, uh, you remember if if a VM has high CPU usage, P Center is, is going to have an alarm. And what we are doing here is we use a, a protocol lock inside, and we basically plot the alarms. In this alarm, I can tell that there are two VMs that hit high CPU usage, red color. And I can notice this VM hit it at this time, this VM hit it at this time. If in an environment that is uh, the right size, you shouldn't be seeing this. In an environment that is way undersized, you see something like this. The lot of VM hit high CPU usage. This virtual machine CPU usage, that's the alarm in P center, and that's the status rate. This is actually coming from a bank, and you can see this quite recently, this is August. So that is uh, that is uh, how you do the CPU right sizing. Let me see whether I can skip to other slides first. I'm gonna skip VM RAM. In the interest of time, I'm just going faster. Okay, uh, VM availability. Maybe I can switch to the live. My bottom is just this one. So. You, are, you need to get back to the VM owner. You need to ensure that the VM is up. The thing about VM up is a little tricky. If a VM has a VMware tools, then you kind of just have to, re then you can rely, and as, and as the VMware tool is giving you a hard bit, you can kind of assume the VM is up, or at least the guest OS is up, because VMware tool is sending you a hard bit. VMware tool is a process. If VMware tool is not sending you a hard disk, well, there can be two things. There can be the, the VM itself is dead, just like VMware tool don't send a hard disk, or uh, somebody uninstalled VMware tool, <laughs> and you got a problem, or VMware tools hang, or there's no VMware tools to begin with. But so you gotta use another mechanism. Well, you can check, uh, a VM is up if it's got activity. You know, it's doing network I.O., it's doing source I.O., it's doing a memory access, and it's doing a CPU access. So you can check for any of these signs. And we verified that even though a VM is dead, as in if you boot up a VM into BIOS, just boot up the BIOS, don't boot Windows or Linux, you will notice that the CPU Demand is not zero. It's zero point something percent. It's not zero. But memory usage, this I/O network I/O is all flat, zero. So CPU is not reliable. But the other three looks to be reliable. So we come up with a formula that essentially checks the VM availability on any given five minutes. So it's a lot more accurate. Every five minutes we check is the VM up or not. We are relying on VM tools. If there is no VMware tools, we are checking VM activity. Now, you may ask, uh, Iwan, in that five minutes, what did the VM got rebooted? And it reboot only two minutes. Yes, it's true. So the, what we do is we check within the five minutes the OS uptime. If the OS uptime is only, so five minutes is 300 seconds. The OS uptime metric is measured in seconds. If the OS uptime matrix is 300, we'll take it as up. If it is less than 300, let's say 150, well, the VM is half up within that five minutes. Because we know the uptime every five minutes, it is a matter of averaging it for the entire calendar month. And I got the uptime of that VM for that month. And that's giving me this, and I can also have a heat map, so I can see clearly. And then I can also have the aggregate of all my VMs. I want to see a total, you know, how's it doing. So that's VM availability. 
and uh, and you can actually select on a particular VM and you can drill down why it is not 100%. So that like this thing, it went down at this So I, I know that's why it's not 100 because there was a downtime for a short period that impacts the numbers. And uh, so that is the VM availability. The, so uh, what we have shared is we have shared a set of dashboards that look after your dining area, your customers. The next deck is looking at your kitchen. And uh, let me, uh, Sunny, this is already 2.50. I'm just mindful of time. We want to open up for Q&A. Yep, absolutely. I think, uh, I think what we've learned today uh, around the dining area and all the dashboards and the concept, which is very necessary to understand, uh, was something which, which, which basically will give the base to everybody attending this webinar or listening to the recording to go ahead and uh, play around with the dashboards, how you can get them. So I think I would, I, I've been answering questions on the chat. So what I would want you to do is probably quickly point out to the resources where all these dashboards are available along with the decks uh, which you presented today. Yeah. Uh, I could say half presented because there are a number of them. And uh, that way is, uh, is we can wind up this. Okay, cool. So that's the link to your blog. The deck is here. If I, you can put it, uh, so this is just a box. This is the deck. And then the, okay. the dashboard, uh, so this is the this is the import procedures. And this is the import procedures and the download file is here. We download this guy. And unless you so you don't need to download individual view. That's just too many things. You just download this guy. And then you follow the instruction inside here. And uh, there are a lot of manual things that you got to do. And so go and read the video and go and review the steps. Not clear, you can just go and ask me. Happy to do that. Awesome, awesome. This looks great. And and you're saying these are 40 dashboards for all the different. Yeah. So cases? what you get? What? What you get is this, Sunny. You get uh, this dashboard and this dashboard, or not this, no, this guy, this guy, this. I, I lost count. I think it's about 40. All right, awesome. You get that. That's, you that's get uh, the super metrics here. You get this super metrics. Mm -hmm. This guy. Okay. Right, and okay. you got the view also, yeah. All right, great, great. I think yep, that that should be a good starting. I I, I will call the is the ending point actually because it has everything uh, what you covered today, and in fact more than that. So with that, I believe uh, 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 we will uh, call it a closure for today. Uh, we've had some questions around. Uh, how we can uh, go ahead and, uh, so I, I'll open it. I'll open it for the floor right now if, if somebody has questions. So unmute yourself uh, and you can ask that question. There were a few questions around dashboarding and minor configurations which I have already responded on. But if anybody else has any questions, feel free uh, to type them on the chat window or you can go ahead and uh, uh, unmute yourself and talk on the phone. We'll give just a minute. So even while we wait for the questions, uh, do you want to talk about uh, uh, your VMworld agenda for people who will be attending VMworld, how they can meet you and stuff? Oh, it looks like you're not even going <laughs> or you're on mute or you got disconnected. Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm on mute. Okay. So yeah, actually, I just want to say hi to Ronit. Ronit is good. folks. Uh, Ronit is one of the product managers, uh, probably the hardest working one. I don't know what time it is in in Palo Alto. 
See you okay, the Palo Alto. Yeah, we nice. <laughs> Thank you for the support, Ronit. And guys, you want to give feedback to Ronit, is uh, one of the product managers for VROPS. Yeah, feel free to contact me. If any of you is coming to VMworld, it will be great to meet you in person there. Awesome. Thank you, Ronit. Thank you so much for your support. All right. Uh, so I don't see any more questions at this moment on the chat window uh, or on the phone. So, guys, we'll call it a close today, and uh, I want to quickly thank Simon uh, for standing by at 6 a.m. In, in UK, and Ivan, who who's ran this marathon presentation, as well as uh, all the content, and everybody else who's joined from across the world. So, thank you once again from the VROPS webinar series. We'll see you around in September. Thank you.